Hi, my name is Refika Nadol. I'm a media artist and director. I use data as pigment and a thinking brush to paint. I embed media arts into architecture to let buildings dream and hallucinate. For more than six years, I have been working with big data and machine intelligence to develop a unique understanding of the relationship between humans, machines and environments. Like many multidisciplinary artists, I found inspiration in artwork and technological tools that focus on questions and themes that are similar to those I contemplate in my practice. And lately, I have been asking myself the question, how will the computer collaborate with us to make art that not only is futuristic, but also about the future? In order to answer this question, as an interdisciplinary team of creative people, we first turned to comprehensive research about all the computational tools available to delve deeper into the latent space of data analysis as a parallel universe existing inside the mind of a machine. This way, we will be able to use existing visual collective memories of humanity to predict parallel realities or controlled hallucinations as neuroscientist Anil said calls them. In the midst of doing that, learning about the Google Quantum AI teams beyond classical breakthrough in 2019 was a pure serendipity, a pure inspiration for me. And I'm deeply thankful to Hartmut Niven, Alan Howe, Murphy New, Michael Broughton, and the rest of the entire Google Quantum AI team. I was able to speculate a nature-based AI quantum artwork with my team members at the studio last year. It's called Quantum Memories. We called the entire project as Aesthetics of Probability, and the Quantum Memories was the first visual outcome of this research. Specifically, our close collaboration with Murphy New allowed us to create a unique artistic computation. Now, I would like to introduce Alex to deep dive into the process. Hi, my name is Alex and I do creative research and engineering for the Rafik Anadol Studio. For Quantum Memories, we wanted a pipeline that celebrates the research and achievements done on Quantum Advantage using superconducting processors. Thanks to the support of researchers from the Google Quantum AI team, we developed tools that allow us to generate visuals using the data that was published to support the landmark publication from 2019. From that data, we used the quantum circuits on the one hand and the actual measurements that result from running those circuits on Google's Sycamore processor on the other hand. Quantum Networks is a tool that visualizes the entanglement caused by a quantum circuit. It renders a 3D force-directed graph based on the conditional probabilities that are computed from simulating a circuit as a function of depth. We were able to compute bit strings going up to 24 qubits, at which point the computation began to take excessively long, indicating that we were entering the realm of quantum advantage. The resulting bit strings were used to determine the likelihood of each qubit having the same value as any other qubit in the circuit. The resulting probability matrices lend themselves to be visualized as force-directed graphs, where each node in a graph represents a qubit and each edge a probability. Each circuit at each depth yields a unique graph. You can try out this tool online by visiting this URL. For now, I've only shown how we visualize simulated probabilities. So now let's see how we used measurement data from an actual quantum computer. The key idea is to use the bit strings generated during the quantum advantage experiment as a noise seed to feed to a generative adversarial network. The GAN architecture that we use for this is based on NVIDIA's StyleGAN algorithm and we train it using a huge dataset of nature images. Again, takes latent vectors as an input and generates unique images for each unique vector. Vectors that are numerically close to each other should yield images that are stylistically close to each other. StyleGAN adds to this by taking in noise textures at various resolutions. Varying these noise textures 
leaves the overall style of the image untouched. Instead, these noise textures change the distribution of features in the resulting image that can be assumed to be random. For example, the position of individual hair strands in the picture of a person or the position of bricks in a wall, waves on a lake or something like that. We use GANs to generate interpolations between styles, so interpolating between latent vectors. For this, we want to decide which areas in latent space are used and in which order we want these interpolations to happen. We also want to animate the noise that affects the random parts of each frame. However, if we just send random noise to the GAN, this will cause flickering. So, the solution to this is to use something called a coherent noise function. These functions are commonly used in computer graphics. The most famous one is called Perlin Noise, after its inventor Ken Perlin. He even received an Oscar for his achievements in this field. For quantum memories, we have developed a coherent noise algorithm that loads the result of one of the experiments that was used by the researchers at Google to prove a quantum advantage. The details of this are quite technical, but it essentially works by creating a hashing function from the quantum measurements. The resulting noise is then fed to the GAN to create stochastic motion. Exhibited on the largest LED screen that National Gallery of Victoria in Melbourne, Australia has deployed to date, Quantum Memories is a quantum AI data sculpture that draws upon a dataset of more than 200 million publicly available nature-related images, which have been processed using quantum computing software developed by the Google Quantum AI research team in combination with a supercomputer that has been programmed with machine learning algorithms. These algorithms allowed us to speculate alternative modalities inside the most sophisticated computer available and create new quantum noise generated datasets as building blocks of these modalities. This 3D visual piece was accompanied by an audio experience that was also based on quantum noise gen generated data, offering an immersive experience that further challenges the notion of mutual exclusivity as the project was inspired by Hugh Everett's many worlds interpretation in quantum physics. Tapping into the random fluctuations of quantum noise as a unique realm of possibilities and predictions, Quantum Memories also provided an interactive aesthetic experience by tracking the audience's movements in real time. The system then simulated how the visitor's observer positions indeed became entangled with the visible outcomes of the ever-changing artwork. With this multi-sensor experience, we encourage the visitors to imagine uh, the potential of this experimental computer technology and the immense opportunities it presented for the future of art, design and architecture in the age of quantum computation. Over 900,000 visitors flocked to the National Gallery of Victoria to see quantum memories as part of their triennial. As the massive foyer event of the exhibition, Quantum Memories exhibited an awe-inspiring and sensational artwork to be experienced collectively. The social post on the piece itself also had the highest ever social engagement in the history of the NGV. Both of these outcomes point to the project's success in reaching a very wide audience perfectly in line with our studio's mantra of art for anyone of any age and of any background as well as it is commitment to free public art.
For me, art is humanity's capacity to imaginate. And I do believe it is artists' responsibility to push this capacity to the edge of reality. I am deeply thankful for the opportunity of this collaboration. My team and I are extremely motivated to understand human consciousness and the world around us by converging art, science and technology. Thank you. Thank you, Rafiq, for the wonderful presentation. And thank you all for attending day one of Quantum Summer Symposium. We had a great time and we hope you did too. We're looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Feel free to look at the link below the YouTube screen to see what the schedule looks like for tomorrow. And we will see you all tomorrow. Thank you, everyone.